Hey guys, what is up? Gary Oak here today with a kind of new type of video idea I have. Um, basically, this is going to be 22 cards you can add to your budget deck to make it play a little bit better. Um, now, some of these are going to be pretty obvious about through here, but after that, it gets a little different. Um, now, what I will say is that... Shit, I have two rotas on there. Um what I will say is it's these cards they're not when they're not mandatory but if you add cards like these to your deck your deck will probably play just a tad bit better so without further ado let's let's get started um, first up is Book of Moon Book of Moon obviously very powerful because if they normal summon special summon whatever you Book of Moon it and it can't flip up for the rest of the turn um, bottomless trap hole because bottomless trap holes, bottomless trap hole, uh, banishes instead, which is very powerful against certain decks these days. Uh, such as I actually had a match yesterday against a Burning Abyss player, and bottomless trap hole just saved the game for me. Uh, next up is torrential, um, torrential tribute. Board wipes are always good, uh, especially if you're playing a deck where you want your stuff engraved. Torrential is a very helpful card. Um, Ring of destruction. Ring of Destruction, uh, it's been eroded, so it's, but it's still essentially the same card. They've just changed it so that way it can't be used for stalling your tie games. But uh, Ring of Destruction is still super powerful, uh, good for killing problematic monsters and also just dealing some damage to your opponent. Uh, Compulse, Compulse uh, is good. Um, it bounces instead of killing, so it's very powerful against Beals and also just stuff that you know can't be destroyed by card effects. Uh, next up is Vanities. Vanities Emptiness is so strong right now. Um, it was so strong that when it was at three, everyone played it at three. Just really good at stopping your opponent's plays. Um, Solemn Morning. Solemn Morning is so good in the fact that you are negating the summon. So it's as if the monster never hit the field. Uh, and it can be used on card effects that would allow a summon. So if your opponent's playing Necros, they have to pay the cost of the ritual summon, then you solemn morning to negate the activation of the ritual summon card, so they just tributed stuff that they can't get back. Uh, next up, Summoner Monk. Summoner Monk's really good if you're playing a deck that has rank 4 XEs. No matter what rank 4 XEs you're playing, you're going to want a Summoner Monk. Um, basically, you pitch a card uh, and you, you pitch a spell card, special summon a level 4 monster from your deck. Um, certain cards have great effects with special summoning. When you, If you guys saw my Master Hero deck profile, uh, Summoner Monk is very key to getting off the uh, Shadow Mist effect. But even then, it's not even a case of that. Summoner Monk is just very, very good for any rank 4 deck. Any deck that makes rank 4s, you want to play Summoner Monk in. Next up is Dark Hole. Like I said with Torrential, field clears are good, um, and sending your stuff to Grave in certain cases is good too. Uh, wiretap, here's where it's going to get a little bit weird. Um, this isn't stuff I'd recommend if you're playing at a high competitive level, but if you're playing budget and you're playing against competitive people, these cards might help out a bit. Um, wiretap is really strong. Uh, basically, opponent activates a trap, you negate the trap and shuffle it into their deck. Uh, the reason that's so good is, first it's a counter trap, so it's spell speed 3, so anything that doesn't have spell speed 3 just can't activate. And the other reason is, is like, Solemn Morning. They activate Solemn Morning, you counter with Wiretap, they just spent 2,000 life points for nothing. It, it, it's, it's pretty strong. Um, Dark Bribe, similar to Wiretap, but it's with spells and traps. Um, you get to negate and destroy though, but they get to draw a card. Uh, Dark Bribe, take it with a grain of salt on whether or not you want to play it. Um, it's it's good. It's just not great because you're letting them draw one. But in certain situations, it can help you out a lot. Uh, Phoenix Wing, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, discard a card to target one card your opponent controls, return it to the top of the deck. It's like Compulse, but it requires that you discard one. Um, the thing that sucks about it is, 
is you by discarding one you are obviously going minus there um, but returning it to the top of the deck means it's going to drop into unlike they'll have to draw into it unlike compulse where it's just to their hand um, and the discarding unless you're running a deck that can plus off discards uh, MST MST is so important in this meta right now um, just because it's great for back row hate pendulum scales it ruins the pendulum scales uh, MST can cripple cleaves like there's no tomorrow uh, next up is marshmallow now the reason I have marshmallow on here is most people don't have an out to marshmallow like they might have dark hole or something like that in their deck but most decks nowadays just Marshmallow's one of those stupid cards that no one really thinks about playing against and unless you know they do something because obviously you're going to set salt Marshmallow and you're not going to flip some it they're going to attack into it so that stops Solemn Warning and that stops Bottomless Trap Hole uh, Compulse you're telling me they're going to have to waste a Compulse on a fucking 300 500 card Marshmallow's good for just l setting it down um, it's I, I like it a lot more over Swords of Revealing Light, honestly, and it allows you to just spend the rest of the game kind of setting up. Um, not to say it's perfect though; like there are cards around it, but a lot of decks nowadays don't really run outs to Marshmallow. Uh, reinforcement of the Army. Now, of course, if you're not playing Warriors, you're not going to play Reinforcement of the Army. But Reinforcement of the Army, run it as a three of. There's a reason this card's at one in Japan, and that's because any card that play, any deck that plays Warriors, Reinforcement of the Army means you're playing three more copies of any Warrior in that deck. Um, just super fucking strong card. Next up is Honest. Um, once again, situational. If you're not playing light, you're not going to play this card. But the good thing about Honest is, is you pitch it, and essentially you make something ridiculous. Um, Honest is super, super powerful for just kicking ass, taking names, um, you know, or just baiting your opponent to attack your stuff, or attacking your opponent, or anything like that. Uh, it's it's a pretty powerful card. Next up is Paro Paro Cerberus. Um, this is a card that a friend of mine showed me with his Shadals that I've kind of started. I've started to like more and more the more I play with it. Um, if you take damage by battle or an opponent's card effect while this card is in your graveyard, banish it. Target one card on the field. Destroy it. Now the reason that's so important is because you're. It's by battle or card effect. So if you're playing Chain Burn, you can pop their shit that's making you cause you know burn and even if you're not playing chain burn if you know they simply attack you directly or something like that you can paro paro cerberus and deal with some problematic cards on their field whether it be annoying field spells back row or monsters next up is retaliating c obviously max c is the best version of all the c's but i believe retaliating is the second best in my opinion um, very situational but I guess the other ones aren't that useful. The other ones are useful if you know what your opponent's playing, and that's the same for retaliating. See, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell card that includes effect that special summons a monster, special this from your hand, and if summoned, uh, any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So the first thing is, is with retaliating. See, you put re retaliating C down. So it's very important against Necros and Hero because if they activate Necros Mirror or uh, Mass Change just two basics of all the spells they play that allow them to special summon you play Retaliating C and now they're, if it's Necros their things they're tributing to get the monster out will be banished instead so that's bad for their deck um, but they'll still get the monster out but with Heroes they can't special summon at all um, because their stuff requires that they hit grave so I mean it, it's it's a really strong card that I feel is underrated and if it's destroyed you can add another one from your deck to your hand trap tricks Mirmello. Um this one's strong not as strong 
as like if you were playing a trap. It's stronger if you're playing a trap trick deck, but if you're just looking for something to splash in, splash in um, Mermelio. Uh, just because in, when you normal summon, you can add a whole normal trap card from your deck to your hand. So that includes Bottomless Trap Hole and the next card on my list, which is Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. Um, highly recommend this card. Highly, highly, highly recommend this card. Uh, when a monster special summon this turn and it activates its effect that turn, uh, negate and destroy it. Simple as that. Negate and destroy. Um, you, it stops Trishula. It stops Dark Law. It stops literally everything and anything in the under the sun. And it, it's just powerful because it's negating the effects as well as destroying it. Next up is DD Crow. During either player's turn, you can discard this card from your hand to the graveyard to target one card in your opponent's grave, banish it. Um, that's so important because anything that targets engraves, your opponent has to show you what they're targeting engrave. Then you can chain DD Crow to banish it, and the effect doesn't even matter. So that means, you know, Shadal's, BA, uh, Heroes to an extent, Necros to an extent, um, Teller Knights, stuff like that, your DD Crow is going to fuck up their plays. And even if you're not playing against meta, there's certain decks that DD Crow will just ruin the day of. Uh, your opponent has four Light Sworns engraved, DD Crow, now they have three, no, no JD. I mean, think about it that way. And then one last card, because it just came to me while I was going through this, because I was like, I knew I was forgetting one. Rivalry of the Warlords. Uh... Rivalry of the Warlords is so stupidly strong and like basically it cripples it doesn't cripple all decks but it cripples most decks because you if you activate it at the right time you can royally fuck your opponent so let, let's just go through some examples um of course you only want to play this if you're playing a deck that only has one type of monster but um, some examples so let's say you're playing against heroes and they only have summoner monk on the field you play rivalry of the warlords and they only have summoner monk that means they're gonna have to send summoner monk and they can only play spellcasters as long as rivalry is on the field that just completely cripples their deck like royally cripples the deck it's it, it's ridiculous, it, to say the least. It's so strong. Um, Necros. Necros is a mixture of spellcasters and warriors. And fairies, because they've got to play fairies to search out spellcasters and warriors. So if you activate it while they only have Manju on the field, guess what? They're sending the Manju to the grave, and now they can only c control fairies as long as rivalries on the field. Um, Teller Knight's not so much because that's an all warrior deck. Uh, Klee's not so much because that's an all. Um, Klee's an all. Uh, fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? Klee is all machines. Um, Burning Abyss for the most part's fiend. But I mean, a lot of decks, decks that are hodgepodges, decks that are a mixture of things, Rivalry of the Warlords is a really good way of kind of tearing that deck apart and forcing your opponent to play with a fraction of the cards they have available to them. Um, but other than that, these are the top 22 cards I recommend to making your deck just a little bit better, uh, help you out a little bit as your locals or tournaments or what have you. Um, this has been Gary Oak. If you enjoyed the video, remember to rate the video, like the video, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.